like to ask the recipient of the 2019 Outstanding Educator Award, Larry Gould, to please join me at the podium. Larry graduated from North Adams State College in 1971 with a BA in History. He continued on to earn his MA from Eastern New Mexico University and a PhD from Purdue University. Larry currently serves as the department chair and professor of political science at Fort Hayes State University. Larry served as the provost of Fort Hayes State and is the former director of the Fort Hayes State Docking Institute, where he Larry was the 1988 recipient of the Fort Hayes State University Alumni Association Pilot Award and the outstanding faculty member of the year 2000. He was granted the Pace Center Award for the National Academy National Academic Advising Association. In 2008, he was awarded the William Platter Award by the American Association of State Colleges and Universities, one of the few national awards for provosts. The Platter Award re recognizes those chief academic officers who have advanced the civic mission of the campuses through curricular reform, public advocacy, accountability for institutional citizenship, faculty de development and recruitment, and partnerships with community organizations. In 2015, he was named a Kansas Icon of Education. Larry, for your dedication and leadership in the field of higher education, I am proud to present you with the Outstanding Educator Award. So, let me start out by saying welcome to all attendees, um, especially Dan Connerton, who was my instructor way back in 1970. We've had a great morning, um, basically sharing, exchanging some memories and some, some things that happened back then with him. And uh, he was a great professor then, and I'm sure he still is now in terms of some of the things that, he, that he's been doing. Um, let me also say thanks to Tony Daly, or Anthony Daly, or whatever. We kind of straightened that out this morning. He was my, my nominator, and I appreciate that, that very much. He, Serendipity or something happened, he must have found me on the internet, I guess. Because <laughs> he wasn't here when I was. <laughs> um, also, let me say thanks to NCLA for establishing that academic foundation, <laughs> excuse me, that led to my career in education. And thanks to all of those who organized this opportunity event that, in a way, allowed my family to reunite um, for the last three or four days here in North Adams, Massachusetts. Uh, my son from Denver, my daughter and wife are from Hayes, Kansas, and so we all got together after quite a saga that you could read about if you get on Facebook. Um, <laughs> planes didn't end up in the right place, and I didn't expect him here, but it was great. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, in regard to the SCLA legacy, let me pay special tribute to Sam Gomez. Some of you may know Sam, um, or knew Sam. Some of you may have been his student uh, and recognized his, his value for this institution. It was his class that was formally entitled Philosophy of Education during the Vietnam War era in the early 1970s. It made it clear to me that things weren't always as they seemed. Finally, I read in I. Berkshire's recently about President Bridges' worry that the lack of collegiality can lead to an unhealthy climate for students. He's exactly right. I am sure, however, that the collective response will take care of that lack of collegiality or the kind of climate that doesn't, doesn't help our students. I've been through it many times as an academic administrator, and I know it's not something that you're very comfortable with, but I know it's something that can also lead to growth and improvement in a variety of other kinds. Placing more emphasis on the liberal arts was the right decision many years ago. There remains the right decision today. Make whatever case you want for the liberal arts, and the cases can be many, here's three. We're educating fully developed people and citizens, or we can frame the liberal arts in terms of employability or suggesting the values and skills, like critical thinking, and this is the part I use every day, like critical thinking, civil discourse, oral and written communication, skills, problem solving, teamwork, or whatever that comes out of that liberal arts education are what employers are looking for. They really are. After 40 years of being in higher education, I can tell you that. So don't ever change that mission. This is something that is really very valuable as we talk about 21st century success. Um, I can say more, but I implore you, do not let anyone, trustees, legislator, legislators, employers, faculty, <coughs> students, or staff, tell you to change the mission of MCL. Stressed and diverse 21st century democracy needs all the liberalized graduates that MCLA can produce. Thank you very much.